Hey guys, Hayden here again from Alarm System Store, and today we're gonna to be going over the DSC Neo Startup and Programming. If you follow our channel, you know that we already have one of these videos out, but I kinda of wanted to revamp it, give a little bit more information, and segment it out so that you guys can see exactly how we set up these systems. Um, I have a Neo set up over here on the table. I have two keypads. I have the HS2 LCD RF keypad, which is the regular keypad with a transceiver built into it. And I also have the HS2 TCHP, and that is the touchscreen keypad that's compatible with the Neo. I wanted to show the differences in these two. I wanted to show that you could do almost all the programming you can with a regular keypad on the touchscreen. Uh, there's a few more detailed programming aspects that you can't access with it, but any basic programming like zones or system options, things like that, you can do with the touch screen. So it's a perfectly viable option for being a standalone keypad on your Neo system. Um, so first off, we're gonna go over to the table. I'm gonna hook up the two keypads and I'm gonna hook up the power, and then I'm gonna show you the startup procedure and we'll go from there. So we're going to take our red, black, yellow, and green wires coming from the keypad and insert them into the corresponding terminals on the main board. I like to do one at a time, so stick them all in there, tighten them down. And then when you go to do the second one, you can just loosen it slightly and slide the next wire in next to the other one. And now we're going to take our AC cables from the transformer and plug them into the AC terminals on the main board as well. All right, I'm going to plug in the system. So now that we've started up the system, the first thing we always do is default the system. And this is just a basic default. You can default any particular module or communicator, whatever it may be on the system. But what, what I'm gonna show you here is the full system default. And that just takes out any programming changes that may have been made. This is especially useful if you've gotten a system from somebody else and you just wanna start with a fresh blank slate. So first thing we're gonna do is hit star eight and then your installer code, default 5555, and then go to section 999. It's gonna ask for your installer code again, and then you can either hit star or 999 to default the system. And this is just gonna wipe everything so you're starting completely fresh. It does take a minute, so I'm gonna speed up through this. All right, so we've gotten to the system fault. This happens every time you default the system. All you do is hit the pound key to silence it. It'll say call for service, but you don't need to. It's just resetting the system. Now that the system's defaulted, I wanted to go ahead and do the module enrollment section and show you guys how that works. Just because I want the touchscreen to be active from startup procedure on, I want you guys to see the differences and what it's capable of and how it interacts with the same information that the regular keypad is giving as well. Um, this isn't necessarily the first step you want to go through when installing your system, but if you have all your modules already hooked up, then you can go ahead and do this and it's gonna auto enroll for you. Um, I'll also show you the section where you can check all of your modules and make sure they're enrolled properly. Just to get all of our modules set up, is hit star eight and then 5555, your installer code. And then we're gonna go to section 902 and this is an auto-enroll module section. So once you're on this screen, all you gotta do is hit star. And watch this other keypad. Almost instantly it comes up. So what we got here is two keypads and one module enrolled. Two keypads, and then the module that it's reading is the transceiver that is inside this keypad. Um, so this is good, and we can double check our module enrollment by backing out to the main programming and then go into 903, 
and it lets you view all modules. Let's hit star. So this is the HS2 LCD RF. And then if we scroll over, the HS2 TCHP. So those are our two keypads and the modules. So we're just going to back all the way out. Now that we have both keypads enrolled, I wanted to go through all the trouble conditions that come default on the Neo. And this is just so that you guys can see exactly what the trouble conditions mean and how to fix them. Um, a lot of times we get calls from people worrying about their system because they think that orange triangle means something's faulty with it. Um, a lot of these are normal. Most trouble conditions are just letting you know that something on the system isn't quite right yet. And such as a, a resistor on the siren output or uh, the telephone line monitoring section needs changed in programming. And I'm going to go through all these basic ones from startup so that you guys can see step by step how to fix them and what they all mean. So now that we're backed all the way out, what we're going to do is we're going to start dealing with these trouble codes. Um, you can hit star 2 and that's going to bring up your trouble code menu. So there's service required, battery trouble, and communications currently. And these are all your standard trouble faults that are going to show up whenever you first start up the DSC Neo system. So to see what these are, go to one section, hit star. So this first trouble condition is called the bell circuit trouble. And basically all this means is that the system supervises any sirens hooked up. So off the bat, it is looking for a siren. And if you don't have one hooked up, then it's going to throw this fault. And you can use either a siren to silence it, or you can also use a resistor, which is what I'm going to do. And that is going to take away that trouble condition so that you can proceed with programming. And the first one is the bell circuit. We can check this on the touch screen also. Hit troubles, and then there's service required, communications, battery trouble. Same thing we saw there. Hit service required, it's the bell circuit. So for the bell circuit, what that means is it's not reading a siren hooked up to the system. So let's jump over to the panel and I'm going to use a resistor in place of the siren because we don't want a siren going off in the shop. And here's our 1000 ohm resistor and we're just going to insert it into the bell positive and bell negative terminals. Alright, so we got that resistor hooked up. So let's hit star two and we'll go back to service required. The only thing that's left is loss of clock. And this next trouble condition is the date and time. And all this means is that you haven't set the date and time. Anytime the power goes out on this system, it's going to reset the date and time. So you'll have to set this anytime you do a power cycle or, you know, power cuts out and the backup battery dies. Anything like that, you will have to reset the time. And I'm going to show you on both keypads so that you know how to do it. So you can either do it from this menu, just hit star, enter your access code, or what you can do is hit star six and then your access code or your master code. The default is one, two, three, four. And then in the star six menu, we're going to scroll over one time to the right and go to date and time. And today, let me check the time real quick. It is 9.56 and this is 24 hour format. So we're going to enter 0956 and the date is 04, 19, 21. So let's go back and double check our trouble code. Star two. So now all we're left with is battery trouble and communications. And it updates immediately on both keypads. So now the service required is just gone on this one. So real quick, I wanted to show you how to set the date and time on the touch screen as well. Um, we just did it over there. All I did was power down the system and powered it back up. So it reset the date and time. So we can either do it from the trouble menu by going to service required and then clicking on the loss of clock. It's going to ask you for your tag or enter code. This is just asking for the master code. So here we're going to enter one, two, three, four, and it'll take you to this screen. And I'll also show you how to get there from the regular menu without going through the trouble codes. If you just want to change it, um, hit options and then user functions. 
and then master code again, one, two, three, four, and then this very first option, time and date. Click it, brings us back up. So we'll go ahead and set that. Go down, it's probably quicker. And then the date, four, 19, 21. Click save, and it'll update. So now we're gonna do communications. Click it, TLM trouble. Now this TLM communication trouble just means that the telephone line monitoring is still enabled on your device. If you're not using a telephone line to monitor your system, which most people don't nowadays, then you have to turn this off in programming. It comes default on, and that's why it throws this trouble condition. So I'm gonna go into programming here and I'm gonna show you how to fix it. Well, we'll do it on the, the touch screen this time. And uh, we'll just go to keypad mode under options. And that'll give us the exact same thing we have up here. See, it's even reading off the zones the same as it is there. So we can enter programming from here. Star 8 and then 5555. And we're going to go to section 015. Now, this has got quite a few options in here, but we're going to scroll over to option 7. TLM enabled. So we're going to turn that off. And then we're going to back out and hit back here, take us back to the main menu. And then if we go to the trouble conditions, it has taken away that communications trouble. We'll check it over here. All we're left with is battery trouble. So this last trouble code is the no battery trouble code. And all this means is that you don't have a backup battery hooked up or it's not charged enough for the system to read it. If you do have it hooked up and it's still showing this, give the battery at least 48 hours to charge and that way the system can recognize that there is a battery hooked up to it. So all that means is we don't have a battery hooked up, no battery system area. So we'll jump over to the panel, we'll hook up the battery real quick and then I'll be back. Here's the battery quick connect cable that comes with the board. You're just going to hook it to the BAT plus and BAT minus, and then insert the black onto the negative side of the battery, and the red onto the positive side. And so now we have the battery hooked up, and as you can see, we have cleared all of the default trouble conditions on the system. The orange light over here is off and the trouble menu is gone on the touchpad as well. So now what we are ready to do is go into our programming so that we can set up our zones. So that's going to do it for the first part of our video here. Um, in the second section, we're going to get into zone programming and simple partition setup and things like that. But I really wanted to clear those trouble conditions for you guys so that you know that those are default troubles. Um, we do get a lot of calls from people that are worried that their system's messed up because they see this orange triangle and it says trouble. And it's very common. Like Those all come default. If you have any other system troubles, please give us a call at 888-811. 0727 and as long as you've made a purchase from us we can give you technical support and get those worked out for you um, please like and subscribe it helps us grow our channel and put out more videos for you guys so that we can give more instruction and deeper info and if you have anything that you'd like to see in a video please comment it down below or if you have any questions you can leave them down below in the comments as well and again i'm hayden from alarm system store and i'll catch you on the next one